Welcome everybody to Volatility Trading Strategies. So for any volatility traders out there that find themselves reminiscing about the good old days of shorting volatility through the now terminated product XIV, nostalgic for that old minus one times inverse ETP that so many of us used to trade before its unfortunate demise, there may be some very good news for you on the horizon. Now this is just a preliminary introduction video today, I'm sure I'll do several follow-ups in the coming months, but there has been a filing for a new proposed short volatility ETP called SVIX. And just cutting to the chase here and why it's so interesting, it is a proposed minus one times inverse volatility ETP, so perhaps the long-awaited replacement for our old friend, the original XIV. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, smash that like button for me if you like volatility-related content, and let's talk about this big news. So first of all, I do want to say that getting a minus one times inverse volatility ETP approved by the regulators these days will be a challenge. Of course, there's a very good precedent set already with the XIV successfully trading for over seven years. But there's also a negative precedent set that the whole thing collapsed and terminated in a one day kill shot. Regulators are going to take both of these facts into account. So anything I say today is subject to delays, changes, or perhaps not even materializing. We will keep a close eye going forward but just the potential alone is newsworthy, so let's talk about it. According to the filing, the fund seeks to provide daily investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to the performance of a benchmark that seeks to offer exposure to market volatility through publicly traded futures markets. The benchmark for the fund is the short VIX futures index. So very exciting, and in just a few words, they are trying to simulate a minus one times inverse volatility ETP. So a couple of benchmarks that you can just bookmark and keep an eye on. I will leave links to both of these down below. But this is the S&P 500 VIX Short-Term Futures Index. One times long volatility ETPs like VXX are tracking this. And then a one times inverse volatility ETP like the old XIV and like this new proposed ETP we're talking about today, they're trying to track the inverse of this. So the Short-Term Futures Inverse Daily Index. Now, I said that in this environment, it is going to be difficult to get regulator approval. And the reason for that, in one word, is Volpocalypse. On February 5th, 2018, there was a huge volatility spike, the largest since the Black Monday crash of 1987. On February 5th, 2018, the VIX index spiked 115%, which caused the one times inverse volatility ETP called XIV to crash. Now, we know the XIV lost over 90% of its value from February 5th to February 6th, that one day window was devastating, and because of that day, it was delisted a couple weeks later, terminated. But there's a very important distinction here that can't be overstated. The XIV didn't terminate because of regular trading hours. The XIV in regular trading hours that day was down a little over 30%. Now that wouldn't have been very much fun for anybody who was short that day, but the kill shot only happened because of the way all these front two month volatility ETPs operate. The way they achieve their desired exposure to the underlying benchmark is, they buy and sell VIX futures at the end of the day to get those allocations correct and maintain exposure for the next day. And I mean they literally do this at the end of the day, after regular trading hours around 4.15 Eastern Time. So in a very short window of time, we've got all the volatility ETPs trying to rebalance. Volatility built up throughout the day, and then in a crescendo at the very end of the day, they all try to rebalance. Now something that a lot of people overlook is, both the inverse and the long volatility ETPs have to buy VIX futures in that very short window of time. The long volatility ETPs need to buy VIX futures to maintain their long exposure. And the inverse volatility ETPs also have to buy VIX futures to balance their exposure. That's an awful lot of volume being pushed through a very short window of opportunity. That's what caused the termination of the XIV. Now, like I said, down over 30% in regular market hours, that's not very much fun. So hopefully everyone had a good grasp of volatility metrics and knew that they were not favorable at all to be short volatility the week before, and certainly not the day before or the day of. On the previous day's close, the VIX futures term structure was already in backwardation. The VX30 to VIX roll yield was negative. There were warning signs everywhere. But that distinction, that the XIV actually terminated because of the end of day rebalancing process, that's going to be very important for this group trying to get a minus one times inverse product launched. They don't have to convince regulators that they've designed a product that can't suffer devastating losses. That can always happen. There's always the possibility of some insane event rocking the market. 
maybe some type of epic flash crash because of the modern computerized markets. There will always be risk. But this group only has to convince regulators that they've solved that end-of-day rebalancing issue. And there's a few things they're very likely doing that would reduce the risk and increase the odds of approval. The first thing I see is that they aren't restricted to just trading VIX futures. It says here, the fund may also invest swaps, options, or in cash or cash equivalents such as U.S. Treasury securities or other high-quality credit short-term fixed income or similar securities that may serve as collateral for the futures contracts. Now, their methodology is still unclear, but remember, they're just trying to reduce the risk, so naturally expanding the universe of potential holdings could remove the need to do it all through VIX futures. Remember, end-of-day rebalancing is in competition with VXX, UVXY, TVIX, SVXY, VIXY, and several smaller ones as well. Using swaps, options, treasuries, and cash really could reduce that burden. Another thing they will almost certainly be trying to do Again, it's not clear at this early stage yet, but they will likely be trying to expand the window of rebalancing beyond just a last-minute scramble before 4.15. They could try two things here. First, perhaps just allow for a longer aftermarket rebalancing period. Expanding that window, maybe even just for 15 minutes, and essentially getting an early start before all the big rebalancing with VXX, UVXY, TVIX, etc. start theirs would help a lot. The second thing they may try is using what's called the trade at settlement market. This is a second order book of VIX futures that was introduced in 2011, which allows traders, managers, and perhaps this new volatility ETP to execute orders throughout the day, and then have those orders relative to the settlement at the end of the day. This would also significantly reduce the burden of that aftermarket rebalancing, and I suspect they're going to be implementing all of these in some capacity. The fact is, those of us who have been in the volatility space for many years, we understand the real reasons why the XIV was terminated, and I'm sure every one of us could put forward a product that would address those issues. It's much more about solving technical issues within the methodology than it is about any short vol issues. Shorting volatility has been around for decades, it's not going anywhere. I put out a video recently going over four of the most common ways people can short volatility, and one of them did include buying the inverse volatility ETPs. I'll leave a link for that video here. Now, I personally think the best risk-reward profile is shorting volatility through the use of options. It's definitely safer, and I think in the long run it can be more profitable. But the inverse volatility ETPs can be traded relatively safely with the right conservative strategy. I've been trading them since 2010, and I've never had any significant drawdowns. So hopefully the regulators understand that as well, that they can be traded responsibly, and there's definitely a place for them in this complex. The more variety, the better. Different rebalancing schedules, allowing for the use of options and swaps, different leverage factors, the more variety, the better. If this new SVIX product does get launched, I'll certainly expand our current suite of VTS strategies to fit it into the already diversified portfolio. So I definitely wish them luck, and I will follow up on this when the time comes. So if you are interested in this volatility space, head on over to my website, claim your free trial, and let me show you what this exciting stuff is all about. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.